Here we have a simple GraphQL server with Express using the GraphQL tools schema package. We have some queries and mutations scaffolded for users. And if you have a look at the documentation explorer, we can see all of the inputs and response types. We'll be using the MongoDB Node.js driver in this tutorial to make our API come to life. So let's begin by installing the MongoDB client. And we're gonna use the driver directly without any additional packages. So we'll install that exact version and we'll restart the dev server. This is using Nodemon to refresh. Now let's go ahead and require the Mongo client from the MongoDB package. Then let's go ahead and quickly scaffold a connect to database function. This essentially will create a new client and it will connect and cache that client and it'll return the connection if it already exists. We'll then pass Mongo to the context of our GraphQL HTTP middleware package and we'll call that connect to database function. Let's create a new .env file. Because I'm using .env as a dependency for development, this will automatically include this .env file. So I'll create a new MongoDB URI variable and I'll pass it a connection string. I will assume you already have Mongo running on your machine. And if not, I'll include a link in the description on how you can install this. Let's begin by creating the user create mutation. It takes a input of the user input type and it returns the user create payload type. So if we inspect these and we move to the actual resolver implementation, it's inside of here, we'll make a request to Mongo and Mongo is available inside of that context. So if we open the type definition as a reference, we'll need to get from the args, the input, and pass all of those values to Mongo to store. And then we need to return the user type. So let's first destructure the inserted ID, and this will be returned to us from MongoDB. We'll select the database WTF MongoDB, and on the collection users, we'll insert one user. Then all that's left to do is return the user ID, and we'll spread the rest of the user from the input. We'll then run the mutation to create a new user, passing in the name and bio, and then we'll return the user ID, name, and bio. If we run that, you can see we have the inserted ID from Mongo, and this is a object ID, as well as the rest of the argument that was stored in Mongo. Let's go ahead and create the query to get a single user by ID. So we'll destructure from our call to Mongo the ID, and we'll spread into a new variable called user, and we'll fetch from the database WTF MongoDB and the users collection, we'll need to call the find one method. We can then pass ID to define one method. And this ID must be an object ID. And we can destructure the ID from the args. We can also import object ID from MongoDB. And then we can return the user ID and we can spread the rest of the user that was fetched from Mongo. Let's also update this to await context.mongo. And inside of graphical, if we run the query and pass in a ID, we should be able to return the name and bio of that user by the ID. Now let's go ahead and create the user update mutation. Let's go ahead and destructure from the args input and from input we'll destructure the ID and we'll spread into a new variable user, everything that we've passed through. Then we will make a request to Mongo to fetch the user and then we'll go ahead and create a request to fetch the user and then we'll go ahead and make a request to Mongo to fetch the current user. And we'll spread that into a new variable called existing user. We need to do this because we will not be passing everything through the input arguments. So we can't return everything. So here we'll return a existing user and we can find one using that object ID like we did previously. Now to update the user, we'll call await context.mongo and using the database and collection users, we'll update one by the ID, and then we can use set to overwrite the values that we pass in. Then all that's left to do is return the ID, existing user, and the values of a user from the input args. Then inside of graphical, if we run the mutation to update a user, we can pass the ID of the user we want to update and a new name. And in this case, we'll just give it a updated name value. 
Then we can return the user, we'll return the ID and the name and the bio. And if we execute that mutation, we can see on the right the response of our updated name. Now let's go ahead and update the mutation to delete users and we'll destructure input from the args param and then we'll destructure from input the ID. Then we'll call await context.mongodb and we'll select the database and collection users and we'll call the delete one method and we'll pass that object ID. Then we'll go ahead and return the deleted user ID and inside of graphical, we should now be able to run the user delete mutation and pass the ID and get a successful deleted user ID back to us. Now let's go ahead and implement the query to fetch all users and the limit and skip arguments. Inside of the resolver for users, let's make a request to fetch all of the data that is inside of our MongoDB collection users. And we can do this by calling the dot find method. Then we'll call dot to array. Because Mongo returns to us the ID as underscore ID, but our GraphQL implementation is just ID, we need to map through all of the records and return a new user object with that ID. Then we can make a query inside of graphical to fetch all of our user ID and names. If we execute that, and we see the results on the right, if we try to pass through some arguments to either limit or skip, and we run this, you'll see nothing happens. We now need to implement this inside of the resolver. So after we call dot find, let's pass in the skip method, and we can use pass int, and we need to pass the skip value, and we'll do the same for limit. We can then destructure the value of skip and limit from the query arguments. Then if we rerun the query inside of graphical, we can see here that our results have been limited.